Hello, my name is Todd Dust, and I'm an Applications Engineer at Cyprus. I work in the PSOC group. Today, I'm going to teach you about UDBs, or Universal Digital Blocks, which are found in most PSOC devices. Let's take a look at what a UDB looks like. So here we are in our Technical Reference Manual, and this block diagram shows what is inside of the Universal Digital Block. It has a data path, which I'll discuss in a moment. It has two PLDs, or Programmable Logic Devices, and it has status and control registers. So these status and control registers are used by the CPU to either read data out of the hardware or to write data to the hardware. You should be familiar with these if you've used PSOC Creator before as we have a status and control register component that you can place in your design. The PLDs are where you synthesize any Verilog that you may write or where you put the simple gates such as an AND gate, an OR gate, an XOR gate, or maybe even a lookup table that you might be familiar with as another component that is included in PSOC Creator. And then the last piece is a data path. And the data path is the central piece of the UDB. This is where all of the math happens, or all of the heavy lifting goes on. So we'll describe that in a little bit as well. So in this chapter, it describes everything about UDBs. So here's a picture of the PLDs. As you can see, there are some inputs that you can route in. You can either true them or complement them. And then you can run those to a bunch of gates. And then after that, you have some other options, and then you can run them through macro cells to go out to your system. And there's a picture of the macro cell. But the most important thing, as I said, is the data path. And here is a picture of the data path. Now, the data path has an ALU in it. The ALU is the most important part of the data path. The ALU has eight functions. It can add, subtract, and, or, XOR, increment, decrement, or pass. And around the ALU, there are different registers. So the way I like to think of them is you have these A1 and A0 registers, and these are your working registers. This is where you do your math. When you add two values together, you write them back in. Uh, the A registers are read and writable from the ALU. Then we also have these D1 and D0 registers, and these are static registers. This is where you would hold a value of maybe the period or the compare for a PWM, and these values are only readable from the ALU. And then also you have FIFOs. And these FIFOs are actually four elements deep. So F1 has four entries, F0 has four entries. And the FIFOs are where you would write data from the CPU to the data path. So for example, maybe you use the data path to create SPI. So you would write your SPI data into the FIFO, and then the data path would take it out of the FIFO and shift it out to whatever SPI device you're connected to. Or the other way around, your data path can shift in data from SPI and then put it in a FIFO so the CPU can read it later. The other important thing in here is there are several comparators. Now these are digital comparators, and what they do is they compare the value in A0, or A1 in this case, with 0. So this comparator here looks at A0, and if the value in A0 is 0, then it sets this signal high. And the same thing with A1. There's also a comparator to check whether A0 or A1 is all 1s or all Fs. So that's the FF detect here. We also have a comparator that looks at A0 and D0. So it can either check if A0 equals D0 or it can check if A0 is less than D0. And then there's a configurable comparator down here that you can see. Now the data path itself has six inputs that it can use and it has six outputs. So there's a MUX that you can choose from the various outputs to go to the six outputs that go out to the routing channel, or you can take six inputs and route them to the various inputs in the data path. The important thing to note here is this dynamic configuration RAM. And as you can see, there are three lines going to it. What this means is that the data path can do eight unique instructions. Specifically, you can configure the ALU in one instruction to add, or another instruction to subtract, or maybe another instruction to XOR. And that is all controlled by these three lines here. So for example, if the three lines are all zero, it would run instruction zero. If the upper two lines are zero and the lower one is a one, it would run instruction one. So now I've just given you a very brief introduction of the UDBs. We also have information in the TRM. If you're interested in more information, there are app notes that you can refer to, and there are also training videos on how to use UDBs. I'm also going to be creating a set of videos on how to create a traffic light controller using UDBs. So look for those as well if you want to learn more information. Thanks for watching.